Hello and welcome to Reykjavik Grapevine's newscast. Uh, my name is Valur Grettisson, I'm an editor-in-chief at Reykjavik Grapevine. Uh, I do not have my, uh, my, the, the star of the show, uh, my assistant, Polly, with me. Uh, the reason is, basically, uh, we are here in a wonderful museum called the Wonder of Iceland. It's in Perlland. Uh, we've been here before, like in, the uh, like in the house itself. We've shown you, like, the, the, the view from the balcony is, is amazing over the city, as well as over Reykjanes. Uh, uh, but here you can actually go and see like everything about Iceland, uh, whatever, basically, like volcano, geysers, uh, the, the stones here, you can see like here is the different kinds of stones. This here is, uh, is Hraptinna, uh, and this is actually also the name of my sister. <laughs> She's, it's like pitch black stone, incredibly weird and, and like thick. Uh, but. Before we start the course, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, our walking tours. Uh, you, you know the drill, of course. Uh, we have a wonderful walking tours. I do this with my good friend, Bjartmar Alexanderson, also an investigative journalist in environmental issues. Uh, and we basically try to explain a little bit what Ice why Icelanders are like they are, basically. <laughs> we never managed to do so, but we try our best. Also, we have a lot of uh, other trips actually on our homepage, grapevine.is. You can see them all. Uh, and just basically, if you're coming to Iceland, uh, this is all you need, more or less, if you want to go take a good and nice trip. Uh, but we are going basically for the news. How about that? There is a moment, actually, uh, in, uh, in Iceland's COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, 20,000 people have now uh, tracked the virus, which is, uh, I know it doesn't sound much, but keep in mind, we are, of course, around 367,000 uh, or closer to 370,000. Uh, so this is, uh, it does not uh, add up to 10% of the nation, but uh, it's, it's, it's something, right? Uh, of all of these people, then 13,000 have actually gotten the virus since um, this, this summer, last summer. So it shows you like how the production has been. We of course have been, um, have been vaccinating. 90% of the nation is vaccinated, uh, or have the the uh, the PCR, uh, the antidote. <laughs> like if you get it, you you can't get it. Well, it's unlikely to get it again. Whoa. Yeah, this is like a very uh, Icelandic uh, rock and cliff. Uh, for example, if you go to the Westman Islands, this is what you will find. These puffins all around, uh, seagulls uh, with their chicks and so on. Uh, it's really, it's quite something to see actually. Uh, but more about the COVID, of course. Uh, COVID, we have, uh, we have now uh, around, we had 170 cases last, yesterday. This is very high. Our record is now around 200 in one day. I've seen, I've seen like uh, other nations have been having similar numbers, like record numbers uh, again and again and again. Uh, this is, of course, mostly, I think, because of Omicron. And the reason that this is getting so spread around Iceland and the, the foundation of this uh, uh, wave, if you will, is, uh, according to our epidemiologist, uh, children under 12 that haven't gotten the vaccination, as well as uh, grown-ups without a vaccination. Not that many, and therefore we are, we are like, if, if we would not have the antidote, we would, of course, be, be absolutely screwed. <laughs> but thankfully, uh, but 36 people have died from the beginning of the, of the pandemic, uh, a little bit high, in my opinion. Uh, for example, I think uh, when it comes to uh, the highest numbers, uh, uh, when it comes to, like, for example, car accident in Iceland, we have gone, we have been, had like around 40 accidents in one year. And this is, so this is, this is very high. Uh, when it comes to cancer, which is our like top killer, like if you're, if you're not like dying of old age in Iceland, then we have around 100 to 120 like uh, cancer patients dying every year. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite high, to be honest. Uh, also, uh, <clears throat> uh, and then to uh, the parliament. Yeah, Art actually wants me to go in here. This is uh, an ice cave. 
uh, keep in mind, this is actually a part of the, the exhibition, and this is, there is here, there is uh, uh, minus 15 degrees here inside here. Uh, so I think I, I'm only in my sweater, so this, this, this might be uh, bad. We're gonna wait a little bit uh, because they open like, uh, uh, like, uh, like in, in, like within some minutes, ten minutes, five minutes. I don't know. But the thing is, of course, uh, half of the nation was unsatisfied with the uh, result because of a very, uh, because of the elections in the northwest, in the, in the northeast, sorry, in the last elections. Remember, there was like a miscount when it came to. Uh, like uh, uh, to the count, uh, and uh, basically how it ended up was that uh, like the committee there counted very very badly, uh, and we had three options because of this. First of all, was basically to uh, keep uh, keep the the elections like it, it, in the end uh, after they have uh, found new votes and so on, and it was a lot of suspects suspects. Many suspected that there was something perhaps foul play in this, but nothing like that was found. But there was a lot of like error, human error in this. Uh, it didn't change the elections though. Uh, part, part of the people actually said that they wanted to, to just to vote again in that constituency. Uh, we didn't do that. The parliament didn't want to go that way. And the third option was to have the, the, the first count and make that uh, valid. Uh, but. Uh, the parliament, they actually had a vote about this, and they said uh, they, they wanted to, to leave it as it was. Uh, and now there is a poll saying that Icelanders are quite unhappy about it. 46% was actually dissatisfied uh, when 35% was fine with it, but 19% was were just neutral. Uh, uh, only the voters of the Independence Party, which is the ruling coalition, like in these three-party coalition, uh, they, were, uh, they were more than happy about this. So it was like, uh, yeah, it was like like it was basically. Uh, they they want like uh, they, like I wouldn't say that like the Republic Party in the U.S., but it's not that far off. They want like uh, law and order and the, these th kind of things, and not the law and order as you can often. Okay, <laughs> hi. Uh, Art is actually dragging me into this ice cave. There is minus 15 in here, mind you. Uh, for me, of course, I'm, I'm pretty fine with it. Uh, not sure about art, but he is, of course, an uh, ex-soldier, so, so we think it could actually work. So, whoa! This actually, this cave here is an exact replica and the first one in the world uh, of uh, an ice cave in Eyjafjalla Jökull. Imagine that. And perhaps you can see these black uh, lines here. Uh, this is actually like when there is an eruption, you will see this in the caves, and you can actually see like the age of uh, like uh, when when that happened. What what time? There's also a line down here. You can see that. Ah, now the cold is getting me. <laughs> so uh, this is this is quite cold, but this is absolutely brilliant, and this is real. This is like uh, this is real snow, and it's beautiful to be in here. You want to go? Want to go here? Follow art. So this is literally like being in a glacier, uh, minus the floor, of course. Uh, and you can see how, how beautiful this is. I check this out here. It's like a crack down. I don't know if you have seen like a crack in, uh, in a glacier, but it's absolutely terrifying. It like goes down like so deep that it's uh, it's incredible, and you can see like better here like the black lines when it comes to like ages or like uh, like what are, this is as as lines or whatever you will. So uh, on with the news though, uh, although this is absolutely brilliant. Uh, Inquar e Seuson, uh, I <laughs> okay, Ma way too much distract distraction going on here. Ah, uh, she just right. <laughs> How about that? Ingvar E. Sigurðsson, he is Iceland's one of the absolute best actors. Uh, he has played in, you've probably seen him in, in some movies also. He played in Justice League, remember the superhero nonsense. Uh, K-19, The Widowmaker, Everest, talking about cult. 
um, the movie Fantastic Beast, the crimes of Grindelwald, and, and, and he sat actually to have a role in the Robert Eggerson, a new film, The Northman. Uh, I don't know if you saw the light or what Robert Eggerson did, but he is uh, an absolute genius, that man. Uh, in my opinion. But uh, Ingo was actually in an interesting re uh, interview uh, with Ruth, and he was talking about his experience working with uh, Kendall Roy uh, or, or Jeremy Strong, which is uh, in, the, in, in the hit show Succession. <laughs> uh, Succession, of course, is uh, uh, one of my absolute favorites. I love that. And the, the third series was just, uh, just finished the other day. Uh, and you know, perhaps for those that don't haven't seen it, it's about a power play between couple, uh, siblings as, with their father. It's like King Lear, uh, just in a modern kind of a set, uh, if you will. And, and I, I, I adore these uh, shows. But he was working with uh, Jeremy Strong in this uh, uh, in, in the first uh, episode in the second season, which was uh, shot in Iceland. And Jeremy has a, has, a, has a like a reputation of being with, well, I even have like fog in my glasses. Uh, he has a reputation for being like a method actor. Uh, and Ingar is actually saying that it was really weird to, to act uh, against him. Uh, and he said like, uh, he, he, he'd been in this situation before, but he said Jeremy Strong takes this to, a, to, a, to the next level, basically. Whoa. This is insane. <laughs> wow, this is a wonderful museum. This is very nice. So, uh, he said that uh, he, he didn't think much about this method acting. He said, like, if you're going to act, just act, you know. Uh, but Dustin Hoffman and, and Daniel Day-Lewis and many other man, like, uh, great actors have done the same thing. Uh, but uh, he said, said, actually, that uh, it can be horrible for the actor afterwards. You can, you can have like, almost like a mental breakdown and so on. And Ingvar says, which is a very practical man and, and a very good actor, that it, it didn't feel like worth it, to be honest. He also said that uh, uh, they, he acted against uh, Jeremy, uh, like uh, to, uh, I don't know, against, to, uh, to him. Uh, where do you want me to go? Uh, but the thing is, of course, that uh, uh, he said that they were not allowed to speak together uh, before the, the shot, uh, and they were not, uh, they didn't interact that much at all. Uh, and Jeremy was always in character, and it was like a boxing match. But he said the result was, was quite impressive. And of course, uh, Jeremy Strong is in, unbelievable as Kendall Roy. Uh, but Ingvar also pointed out a pretty good Icelandic point also, uh, which was basically that, uh, for example, when he saw Daniel Day-Lewis, uh, he, he got the Oscar, and he, and he actually thanked his wife for uh, putting up with his nonsense on his characters. Uh, and then actually Ingrid said, well, if you have to take your work home with you uh, and, and it's uh, frustrating for your family, uh, that, that's, they don't really deserve that, not do they? And he's, he's not a fan of this, which is uh, brilliant and hilarious at the same time. Uh, and uh, yes, and also talking about snow, there will be red Christmas, like we call it. Wait, what, what is this? This is a water tiger. Well, I would not want to meet that freak anywhere. <laughs> uh, Red Christmas in Iceland uh, means that we will have uh, no snow. It's going to be rainy. And now, right now, it's the darkest time of the, of the year. Um, the, and it's always hard in the darkest time of the year to have a lot of rain because, uh, like, for example, now it's, uh, it's noon, but you can just uh, perhaps art shows you like, how gray it is outside. Uh, and this is as good as it gets right out there. Uh, but uh, at uh, around four o'clock, this will be all dark. Uh, and, it, and the thing, the thing about the darkness is that it can be quite overwhelming. Uh, many feel, th feel this. Uh, it, for example, it can mess with your sleep pattern. For example, for me, uh, it, it can even like uh, induce like uh, melancholia, uh, like depression, and so on. 
uh, and, uh, and the rain is not helping. And also just over the Christmas, most often we've had, uh, well, not most often, but often we have, of course, uh, uh, we have uh, snow, of course, uh, but, uh, but it, it, it's like, it's very different from every year. And some, some years we just have like storms, like 24 hours or, or like for the whole month, you know, but so it goes. And the good news in the end, uh, uh, Grimsey, uh, we, we told you about this, that Grimsey actually, they, like earlier this year, their church burned down. And the church is quite, was quite old. It was well over 100 years old. Uh, and Grimsey is an island of 100 people. 100 people live there. And those are all sailors, uh, farmers, and so on. It's a very, very old, uh, like, could say like an old uh, society, very conservative in, in some ways. Uh, also, this island is, is quite unique because uh, a lot of these uh, like folk tales I've been telling you about in the supernatural uh, Iceland, they are though, mo many of these uh, stories actually happens uh, in 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 uh, in Grimsey or around Grimsey. For example, the troll stories, uh, even like uh, mermaids and mermans and so on. So it's it's, it's an interesting and odd island. Uh, the thing is that uh, this church burned down and it was quite a shock for, for the people that lived there. Uh, so they actually started to, to uh, uh, fund, actually uh, try to fund for a new church. And today they announced that they actually have the money to build a new church, which is nothing less than fantastic. Uh, because uh, this is something that matters a lot for the community. This is a very tight community. The island is also just uh, talking about darkness. For example, right now there is complete darkness there. Uh, they they don't even have on, on the on the on the last on like uh, in the end of this like next week, uh, like before 21st of uh, 21st of uh, December, uh, the the sun doesn't even come up there. So it, it's quite dark. And it's the same thing like in in the in the summer actually, uh, the sun doesn't even go down. This is quite. Remarkable and it's wonderful to see it in a good weather. You can see like the top of the sun like in the ocean and then just come up again Where are you taking us? So we're going way to the top here You can feel there's food Smell of food. Ah, this is the this is the restaurant. It's a wonderful restaurant Of course with a crazy view by the way So that's it for the news. Uh, my name is, of course, Walu Gratteson. I am an editor in chief at Regia Grapevine. Uh, remember our, uh, <coughs> remember our uh, tours, uh, walking tours. Uh, for example, we'll, we have a walking tour on New Year's, not the New Year's Day, but the last day of the year. And it's always quite something because everybody's blowing something up over the day. And we can tell you a little bit about fireworks and so on. Uh, and uh, yeah, like and subscribe, of course. Comment if you want, and uh, and enjoy the the view. I'm actually quite impressed here. I haven't been here for years. See you then. <laughs>